Well, hello again. It's Wednesday. It's about eight minutes past eight. And I'm really hoping that more and more of you are joining me live so that you can ask me any question that you want to ask in real time. And I will do my best to uh, answer it. Clearly, you like the gossip. Last night has been much better received than my attempt at chatting on mass. So I will carry on with the gossip. There's plenty of that today. And then my theme for tonight is going to be nuclear. So we'll get to that as well. If you can theme your questions on nuclear, that would be great. If you've got other questions to ask, I will do my best to answer them. Hi, Christine. Right. So let's start with the most important things, the asks again. Please, now is the time to share this video. Click on share on your personal site. If you are a Lib Dem, please click on share on Lib Dem pages because it's really nice for others to see what we're doing here and to be involved and that's building quite an audience. If you are in Copeland, please click on share on Copeland pages. You know, Millam in the News, Gosford T Scale. Let's share in the group, share in the pages. People can always switch it off only takes a second but let's give them the chance to ask that christine what do you mean by nc192 is rejected was that the amendment on your atom i'll let you get back to me on that when you can type an answer i know there's been problems the um, government's been trying to pull us out of your atom and substantial questions has been have been raised regarding whether that's actually legal or coherent. Ah, excellent. I know Lord Teverson's been working on it. I've been tatting to key people in the Lib Dems, Lib Dems and they've been pushing it, but also key people in the nuclear industry uh, have been raising the fact that although the um, government said that because we were pulling out of the EU, we had to pull out of Euratom, there didn't actually seem to be any grounds for that. So not only were there no benefits to pull out, none whatsoever, we didn't actually have to do it under any, for any reason. Is anybody else not convinced that this, this government's got a clue what it's doing? So where were we? Share the video, please. Can you share that video? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Christine. You've shared it. Um, if you can share it to any pages, that's even better. Please like the page if you'd like to find me tomorrow night. If you're not seeing this live, you can see things live if you like the page. Type in your friends' names on the page and they'll be able to see it too. Please follow me on Twitter because I put out announcements if you do Twitter. Now, this is the big one tonight. We are trying to get out to meet everyone. We're in the process of setting up meetings everywhere. Um, but we need to advertise that. And we really want to do some advertising in the local media, but we have no budget for that. We don't have any money. We are a Roots Up funded organisation. I'm desperately trying to raise £600 by Monday to fund that advertising. That's what we need. But that requires you to donate. I'm working on a couple of other things as well. Um, Vince Cable has said he will try his best to organise and run a charity lunch in London where he will be the, the speaker to raise funds for us. So probably not charity, but fundraising lunch. So if you know anything about that, if I get any more details, I'll try and let people in London know so you can go to that. Um, I am going to have to nip down to Northwest Conference on um, Saturday and shake a bucket this is the reality of Lib Dem campaigning. We have to raise the money. We are not funded by big donors. We are funded by the public because we work in the public interest. Clive Lewis has resigned from the Labour front bench. Why? Why is that, Stephen? Please let me know. I haven't had time to watch the news. I've been making the news today. We've been filming... I've just, I mean, I've run non-stop and just really sat down at the table, <laughs> shut my daughter to bed and uh, here chatting. No time to prepare, no time to put any lippy on, <laughs> just here. Um, NC192 was a Labour amendment to keep us in Euratom, which this was rejected by 49 vote, vote, votes. <sighs> Crumbs. Okay. 
He's, uh, so Clive Lewis has resigned because he voted against Article 50. Thank you, Brian. Well done, Clive. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that is true here as well. I started to talk yesterday about some... Oh dear. Yeah, I'm just getting lots of news of the Euratom Amendment being rejected. That is just madness. So... It sounds like, and apologies if I'm getting this, I mean, I'm being told stuff here through the, the news feed. It sounds like Labour said, look, we don't have to pull out of Euratom. And that move not to do so has been rejected. That is just madness. Absolute madness. What are they doing? Okay. So, gossip from today. Today we were at the Beacon in Whitehaven and BBC Look North and Cumbria decamped there to film the Sunday politics. So on Sunday morning we will have the programme with Andrew Neil based in London and then it cuts to the regions and we will be your regional feed and instead of it coming from the studios in Newcastle it will be coming from Cumbria. Good. Yes and no. What I really hoped in a regional program at least was that we would get into our local issues especially the NHS issues and the the issues with Whitehaven Academy and, and the schools and schools funding as well today to be fair they the um the presenter Richard Moss did try to get into the NHS issues and I was getting more and more angry and I interrupted once, but I, I actually didn't get the chance to speak, although he promised I would have. Because our local issues were absolutely lost in political point scoring. I found that extremely difficult. I just wasn't happy at all. It's not what I'm there for. In fact, the gentleman to my left, who was one of um, one of the Michael Guest, one of the independent candidates, was the only person who actually t seemed to be talking about my world. I'm just not interested in political point scoring. For me, it just gets in the way of the debate. Um, we're still the issue. The schooling issue wasn't even there. We have been promised a much longer radio debate last week. Next week, <laughs> sorry time travelling, um, which will get into the issues in more depth. I will do my best. I'm so sorry. It's, I'm trying so hard, but um, on, the, on the NHS issues, I don't think any of the other candidates actually properly understand them. And that's the issue. You can't have a productive deba debate that roots the stuff in our world if the other candidates are spouting sound bites given them to, to them from London. So it's quite difficult to keep my temper over that. Why, if the issues weren't there, I'm going to try and focus on them. I've got a special guest coming down. Nigel Jones is the chair of the Liberal Democrats Education Association Committee that I sat on for three years. And we're going to have a, a really hopefully a deep discussion about the issues with academisation and how the situation at Whitehaven Academy has come about and what's needed to resolve it. But I want to give proper time to that. So by having Nigel as a special guest, I hope we'll be able to do that. He will be up um, in about a week or so. What else from the um, Sunday politics? It wasn't all bad. Although it was really party political point scoring mainly during the debate, the minute it was over, we started to talk as candidates and there was really constructive discussion, which is what I want. Um, we need to upskill each other and work together. That's one of the things I've most enjoyed about being involved in the success regime campaign is that I felt that I've just been working with people of all political parties without any barriers we've just got our heads down and focused on the issues so 
there was a lot of frank and friendly discussion. I, you'll see my picture feed for this was with Fiona Mills, the UK candidate, and Michael Guest, one of the independent candidates. And I'm really happy to take and share that picture because that's an indication of good politics. We are talking, we are thinking, we are trying to work things out and work together. And I would say that I think all seven candidates are in this for the right reasons. They want to serve Copeland. The question is, have they got the skills to do that? And are their feet on the ground in terms of the way they see the world? Um, and I think, I mean, the UK candidate and Green candidate are what they are. Their limitations in seeing the world, as I would put it, are the UKIP candidate believes that hard Brexit is a good thing, which I don't. And the Green candidate believes that nuclear power is evil and needs to be got rid of, which is incoherent because how else do you deliver a green agenda? Um, but they're really grounded and good to talk to as people. And as soon as we get off the issues that we do disagree on, we have a lot in common and a lot to talk about but there are i think i mean it's worth watching the channel 4 news tonight because they're putting it across very clearly and it's starting to get across the major news channels as well that there are now really substantial problems with the 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 labor candidate um she did make it today she got onto the program she did not look at all comfortable she did not go off script she didn't talk to anyone at any stage about the issues i don't get any indication that she really gets them or can talk about them fluently we now have hustings so really it's best that you come and see this for yourselves i'm not comfortable speaking in a negative way about other people it's not something that i do but it's part of the story here um, so we have hustings in Keswick in St. John's Church at seven o'clock on Sunday. And in uh, that's this Sunday. And then on the Monday, the next day, we are in the URC in the centre of Whitehaven. And that's at 7.30. But we have already been told that the Labour candidate will not be attending and sending a substitute, which is really quite devastating because yeah well she's certainly sending a substitute on Sunday and it looks like the the conservative candidate is too because it the conservative candidate comes very well across very well when she is on her own with the press churning out pre-rehearsed sound bites that she's clearly agreed with her 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 press office but the minute I'm there and asking difficult questions, they don't ask stack up. And that happens. You'll be able to see this live on the Sunday politics. Um, we talked about the success regime and she said she'd just called for an independent review and had had agreement for that. But of course, she didn't know that we'd just had one and it had been published and it was a stitch up report by NHS England, published by NHS England that says that it's safe to travel up to four hours in labour because she hasn't actually read up on the stuff. Um, so she can kind of get away with that on her own with the news journalists who don't know the issues very well. I don't think she's going to stand up at Hustings. I hope she will come and prove me wrong. Please come. If anyone from the Conservative Party is watching this, get her there. If she needs to be briefed on anything, on the NHS stuff, she can be briefed by Voice for West Cumbria Healthcare or by me. I'm happy to do it. But she needs to know the issues and she needs to know what she's dealing with. It's not good enough. She's clearly in a position where she can ask for and get favours and it's not good enough to waste that on asking for things that aren't actually coherent. What we need is the success regime stopped and recommendations 20 and 21 of the Kirkup review reinstated. And she needs to understand that and know why. <sighs> so that's the tough stuff from the hustings, but there were some really magic moments as well. Um, we have our independent current candidates in particular are quite characters. 
I got on really well with Michael Guest, who was sitting to my left from uh, what I was joking with him was the Independent People's Republic of Myra's party. Um, and I hope he came to see he has this view that all people from political parties are just spouting a party message and are um, controlled. And I can kind of see why he would think that. But hopefully sitting next to me, he could kind of pick up that there is nobody here watching me. I am not controlled. I am just telling you what I honestly see and believe. Uh, there's I suppose the anecdote from when we had that medical meeting on Saturday with Baroness Brinton. Um, we went round the table and all introduced ourselves. And quite a lot of the people there I'd never met before. Um, and we went round and introduced ourselves. And we got to the end and Andy, my manager, said, I'm Andy and I'm Rebecca's manager. And there was just this roar of laughter. And nearly blasted him out the room at the idea that I was actually manageable. Um, hmm. But then that we've got is it Ray Iverson or Roy Iverson is the other independent on the end, and he, you, you can just not guess what he is going to say next. So they asked him about power, and he just, I think he ended up just saying, "We want windmills, thousands of them." <laughs> so he comments on nuclear power. And then on the NHS, within seconds, uh, given that we've got all these issues with the closure of obstetric care, he was off on one about tinning processes for food. <laughs> I mean, what he has to say is quite fabulous and interesting, but um, his ability to stay on topic and address the issue under discussion is somewhat dubious and I, I was absolutely cracking up laughing <laughs> I don't know I hope he's got a fantastic face he looks like someone of tremendous authority and um, so I hope it was focusing on face and not catching my shoulders <laughs> next to just... <laughs> so uh, I don't know but it, it is really interesting um, being on this campaign trail it is such a privilege to be part of it you're getting some unique experiences and i think um fiona mills and i were really joking about this really living it you know you are a long time dead and while we're alive let's live life to the full and do the best that we possibly can um i was going to talk tonight about nuclear now i am not sure um, I don't really think I can cover this effectively in one night. Um, oh, yesterday I was going to show you my posters. My posters are now going up in places. They're quite small. As you will see on Facebook, you're using the selfie camera that reverses text. Some people have already noticed this on my rosette. So all text is reversed. So I just wanted to point out how clever my handouts are that are printed back to front. Um, don't forget... Like this video, share this video, like the page, tag your friends to like the page, get them involved in the debate. One problem with the blooming Sunday politics is that it is the northeastern Cumbria. So people in Millham are not going to see it unless you watch it on iPlayer, in which case you can access that one. I think that's really sad. I think they should be showing it across the whole constituency. But you can find out all about what's going on here. And Millen, if you're listening, organise yourselves a hustings. Labour and the Tories will procrastinate and when you send them, they will send back a message saying, our candidate cannot do such and such a date, ignoring all the others that you've offered them and could send a substitute. Just ignore that. Just call a hustings, read the riot act. I mean, if you give, give, send me some dates, I can tell you which ones were booked for, because we were already booked for Hustings. i tell you, we're booked for Hustings this Sunday in Keswick, Monday in Whitehaven, and next Thursday we are recording a radio debate in the evening, which is such a shame because the Labour Club in Myrus are showing um, I, Daniel Blake, and Ken Loach is coming, and I would love to be there, but we're recording that radio debate. So we cannot do this Friday, this Sunday, this Monday, or next Thursday. Otherwise, we can do Hustings so, Millam, get yourself organised. I will be there. I would like to talk to you too. OK, nuclear. OK, here is my inf introduction to nuclear prop to help us navigate the issues. I'm just, it's just blocked out by a comment that says, love your nail polish. Claire's accessories, not very expensive, a lot of fun. 
Um, so nuclear, from a politician's point of view, there are, uh, it helps if you think that there are four big issues to get your head around. People, everyone in Copeland gets the difference between Sellafield and Moorside. Sellafield is um, our highly complex nuclear site with a lot of legacy issues and the reprocessing plant. Moorside is next to it, and that's where the new build is going to be, the three AP1000 reactors. That's where that's planned to be. So they're separate issues. And it's really important to understand that because you get people like um, Jack, the Green candidate, coming along and say, saying how unsafe Moorside is. And the issue is that Sellafield is a site that has colossal risk. And the risk associated with nuclear new build is very, very low in comparison with this. Sellafield's an incredibly complex site. It's been um, involved in reprocessing, which is vastly more toxic than um, general nuclear energy. And it's also got a heck of a lot of legacy issues to do with the fact that in the 1970s and 1980s, especially during the miners' strike, the plant was running on full capacity to try and cope with the energy, the power cuts due to the miners' strike and, and the winter of discontent and so on. And a lot of nuclear waste of all sorts of different types just got chucked into ponds um, without proper record as to what was what went in, and is in a put it, it, it's managed. I want to give credit to both um, Labour and the Tories. Um, there is good oversight of Sellafield. And a lot of money and commitment and investment has gone into addressing it, which is exactly right, because it's essential. It is needed. Um, but we live with it here. We are stuck with it. There is no nuclear policy that will make Sellafield go away. It's... It's one of the most hazardous sites in Western Europe, if not the most hazardous. And it's just not simple. And people here are not afraid of nuclear new build in the way that you might expect them to be, because it is so much safer than this. And in fact, having this going on beside this somehow gives hope to the future and, and gives the whole industry a positive image of itself and the ability for to people to be involved in um, what's going on now, which is somehow healthy. So a lot of green activists come in and, and read the Riot Act about how we should be getting rid of the new build, and they don't really get the mindset here of people who deeply understand these issues. So we've got Sellafield, which is where all the very toxic waste is, and we've got to work out what to do with that to make it safe in the long term. Um, it is incredibly radioactive, and a lot of people think that you, they've seen the graphs of exponential decay. They think the radioactivity is going to drop off quite quickly, but in fact the radioactive isotopes decay into other radioactive isotopes. So it doesn't drop off like that. It's very, very high radioactivity for tens and, or hundreds of thousands of years. And dealing with that is just a nightmare. We had a major consultation in 2013 about having um, the GDF, the Geological Disposal Facility, commonly known as the dump. Um, but obviously it's a lot more controlled and managed than that. And that was about interring the um, radioactive waste in concrete and uh, deep burying it, either permanently or with retrievability. And that consultation fell apart. I wrote about why at the time. I'm also a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts, and at that time I was a digital champion specialising on 
mass online discussion and consultation processes. And consultation processes have changed with social media. But that consultation process had not been updated to take account of that. And that's why it fell apart. If you want to see my views on that from 2013, you can find them if you search for um, Lib Dem Voice um, Nuclear Waste and then add Rebecca Hansen if you need to. And you can see that as it was then. You can... And it just fell apart because there was an official process going on. And there was also... A social media process going on and the social media process that the experts didn't engage with that um, key very vocal people whose views were not tested dominated it and it reached different conclusions to the conclusions reached by the official process but the official process was also flawed um, so it was quite important that that consultation process was stopped and it didn't reach a conclusion as to what the best way forward was, whether it was geological disposal in Cumbria, geological disposal somewhere else, or some kind of different solution. There's also a sense that the technology is evolving quite rapidly, so you know maybe something better will come along, but it's not much sign of that. So that consultation is to return. It is essential. It is really well run. It's got to be democratic because so much of the knowledge about nuclear here is in the um, it's in the local community of people who are retired people who are working but are un aren't necessarily involved in the consultation there's so much that it's known and we've got to tap into that rather than just use a very limited official process and there are ways of doing that but the experts running the consultation have got to engage with the social media. So you need a strong MP to have oversight of that, and I would be proud and privileged to represent you in that. Um, so the Salafid issue leads into the highly active waste. Then we've got the Moorside new build, and then there are all the new build infrastructure issues that go with that. We've got the issue of the national grid connection, which is to lead to having massive pylons in the south of the constituency, which is a huge issue. There's also the issue they're effectively going to have to build a town for the workers just to the, just to the south of Myrus, and that's a big issue. There, there are lots of issues like that that need careful management and scrutiny uh, and real community engagement to make them work. There's so much more too, but hopefully that's um, an outline. And if you want to send in your questions off the back of this video, I will do another session on nuclear and I will do my best to come back and answer them. The other thing, uh, Moorside New Build in the issue at the minute because the three reactors are due to be AP1000s, which are Toshiba Westinghouse reactors and Toshiba looks like it is pulling out of nuclear. The project is unlikely to go down because it's so well advanced, it has um, a tremendous value in what's already been done. Those react the reactor type is nearly licensed for the UK uh, and is due to go live in China very soon. So even if Toshiba either go down or decide to disinvest or sell it, it sh it's likely it'll go ahead. There's an awful lot of people got oversight on that. And nobody is expecting to be able to do anything until we get the next announcement from Tashi, which is due on Valentine's Day, about three in the morning, which will be their third quarter result. And that may actually not give any indication as to what's going on there yet, but it may. But we're not expecting anything until then. OK, let's go back through your questions. OK. Um, right, so you told me about the rejecting of the Euratom amendment. I think the Lib Dems are going to try for one tomorrow. I'm not quite sure. They might be trying for it in the Lords. There are ways and means of getting through and done, and we will not give up. Um, what effect will withdrawal from Euratom have on Cumbria's nuclear? People are concerned it'll have a substantial effect and delay things. Nobody's really mapped it out in detail yet because it's just like a colossal, enormous black cloud that's just appeared that's completely unnecessary. It'll be very complicated. 
Turning back to Euratom, now that we have to leave the agreement, how do you think this decision on the Brexit government will affect the nuclear air? We're not quite sure yet, but we are still fighting that. We have not given up yet. If other candidates are spouting sound bites, why not expose that in hustings? I will do that if they come. But it's also fair because it gives them the chance to um, show that they're not exposing sound, spouting sound bites or to engage in the conversation and show by the way they engage in the conversation that even if they were not properly engaged at the beginning of the conversation, they are by the end of it. That's the, one of the key purposes of hustings. So let's hope that they come. Trudy, you should come. Gillian, you should come. You're coming across well in the, in the media. I saw you just now on Channel 4. Oh, was I on Channel 4 tonight? Right, excellent. I'll watch that later. That's why I wasn't on last night. I think it was because um, Michael Crick was doing everything he could to try and interview Gillian, um, and he wanted to give her every chance before it went live. That's my guess. Uh, won't the hustings give you the chance to raise and debate local concerns about the NHS and White Even rather than national media here who are upset, are Brexit obsessed? I think it will, but I really wanted to get our issues on the national stage. I think they're of national importance. I think people are interested. It's just you've got to have the media and the other candidates on side and sufficiently well versed to do that. I watch the news. I agree that Labour are in big trouble. Yeah, it's not comfortable to watch. Labour, uh, all our, I mean, your own polls and our polls show that you are likely to come in third or possibly fourth in this election. Uh, and the precedent from the recent by-election shows the same. So please, will you consider endorsing me? because I would be a really decent MP for you. I know how to do that. I know how to listen. We have been working so closely on all the success regime stuff. And hopefully everybody who's talked to me has felt really heard and really understood and that we're passionate about the same issues. If you don't, we could end up with a Tory MP. I know that's difficult. I'm sorry. Um, you're now watching their Channel 4 News on C4 Plus 1. Okay, I've got the... <laughs> Watch out, Mrs May. Hmm, yeah. I want to hear the radio debate. The radio debate is not being recorded until next Thursday. Hopefully we'll get into a lot more detail. Predictions for Lib Dem vote share. It's a really difficult one. Um... It could be really high. We've got a 65,000 electorate, 64,000 electorate, I think. Uh, I think at least 20,000 of them will not vote. I think a Tory vote of 10,000 will turn up pretty much. There's a lot of people who just vote Tory regardless. I think um, the Labour vote is the most worrying because... It's gone down, I mean, in Rotherham in the by-election, it went down from a stable vote of 1,500 to like 300 odd. It's just collapsed that much and the, the vibe here is really, really bad. Um, so let's say Labour guaranteed, I, I don't know, I've met some of the people who will vote Labour regardless. And let's say there's maybe five or 6,000 of them. I think UKIP will get three or four thousand, <coughs> and uh, I, I'm not. I haven't met anyone who's voting Green, and the Greens have typically had a vote of sort of a few hundred here. So, Cumbria is a pragmatic county. People want an MP who's got their feet on the ground and actually understands and talks about their world and their issues. So, where are all those other people going to go? Where are their votes going to go? We've not, we've only, there's another 30,000, 40,000, 30,000 maybe potential votes there to go out and get. And I don't see anyone else who's going out there and fighting for them and talking about reality. I think maybe, um, I think maybe Fiona Mills, the UKIP candidate, is trying to do that. Um, but that hasn't gone down. Anyway. <laughs> 
Yeah, look at the We Need West Cumbria Hospital Facebook forum for their discussion on that. Um, so, it could be anything. There's a big pragmatic vote that I'm out to get. I want to be a really good, hard-working MP from a credible party, a roots-based party who will represent this. And I, I, the other key candidates aren't going out for that. They just seem to be trying to protect their own traditional voters um, and crash the other party's votes. Um, so, yeah. I would say the betting odds are very, very good on the Lib Dems at the minute. I think you can still get 50 to 1 at 1 bookies. Go out, stick yourself 20 quid on the Lib Dems. That could pay you back a grand if you can't do the maths quick enough. Um, let's go back and talk about the Conservative vote. Is a Lib Dem vote a vote for the Conservatives, Debbie? Is a Lib Dem vote a vote for the Conservatives? No. The Conservatives are the favourites and are likely to win. Um... So a Lib Dem vote is, is, we are the only credible opposition to the Tories. So if you don't want a Tory, you have to vote Lib Dem. A Labour vote is a vote for the Tories, because Labour are not going to win this. Why is Labour acting so weird in Copeland? Um, I think the candidate is not coping. She's taken a lot of criticism for stuff that's been in her leaflets about her being a doctor and her having been an NHS campaigner, which are uh, dubious claims to say the least. And that's compounded by all the national issues. Debbie, I believe Labour have been there and spot the maths teacher crunching numbers in real time. Yes, I have got a, um, a habit of doing that. Sorry. I didn't get your percentages you were looking for, Stephen. But essentially, this is very winnable. Um, I think so far, we've only just begun to connect with the electorate. We're 12 days in now since this by-election was announced, and we were expecting it to be in May. So from scratch, we've had to build a team, take photos, get our act together on all the issues, create literature, send the literature to print... Uh, for stuff that's being postal delivered, uh, it takes, you have to book it like two weeks in advance to get the postal delivery slot. Hand deliveries where we've got volunteers coming in from other areas, they're generally not here yet because when you say we're having a by-election in four weeks, people say, oh, I'll come in two or three weeks because they just need a chance to get their lives together to come away, especially when they are generally staying away here in Copeland because it is so remote. You know, Richmond Park, everyone was just pulling out for a couple of hours after work from London. That is, it's a bit different here. It is fabulous if you want to come and help. The views are stunning. It is like being on a really, really pleasant walking holiday because you're just walking and delivering some leaflets in the most stunning scenery and some amazing places. So it is great and people are turning up with their camper vans. But my point in all that was that... The moment, we've only just started to build a momentum in the last few days. People are now telling me they're getting literature and they're seeing it, but that's only just begun, and that momentum will carry on and will build right up to election day. So by the time election come, day comes, you hopefully should know that we should be really connected, and and then people will start to the polls will start to change. But nobody's doing any polls. Nobody's done any polls since the first days of this campaign, and then the. Labour poll immediately after that where they realised that they were in real trouble that was ride, widely reported in the in the paper. <clears throat> Do you think Stoke is grabbing most of the attention? Definitely. These issues with um, Paul Nuttall um, and the electoral fraud issue of him not actually being resident at the address he put on his forms and just the general hype associated with Paul Nuttall and... Um, the fact that most of the people who want to get involved in a by-election are closer to Stoke than to Copeland. You know, most people live in the south, so they're going to soak Stoke and they're not going to drive on another four hours to get to Copeland instead, unless they love walking in the lakes, in which case they are coming anyway, which is great. Thank you, Stephen. 
persuade some of your mates to come as well. Um, so yes, it is grabbing most of the attention. That's the way it is. All the parties have got the same issue. But it is a shame because I wanted to get our issues in the spotlight. Okay, I think that's it. I think it's time to go. Reminder about the asks tonight. Please share the video. It'll go live. I'll, it'll go should go live in a few minutes after the end of it. Click on share. Um, please like the page. Please invite your friends to like the page. Then they will be able to interact with me in real time. Please leave your questions down below um, about nuclear, and I will read them before we do more. Um, please like us on Twitter. But the most important one is go to this page, rebeccahanson.org.uk. Please click on donate. We desperately want to get something in the newspapers to tell people where they can meet me and some flyers printed. We need that. We can to raise the money, but £5, £10, whatever you can give, it's of tremendous value. And if you'd like to deliver some leaflets, you can find out how to do that. I can't remember, I was going to check. Can you find out how to request a poster there? I know a lot of people have been requesting posters from the surveys they've been returning. been delivering them today. Um, been delivering posters in Myris, which I'm really pleased about. Um, okay, I think that's it. Oh, got your leaflet in my post box today. Very impressed. Loving the strong support for Whitehaven Academy. Cheers, Paula. I will get my blog published tomorrow and I'll put some links onto the um, Action Group site and so on and take some questions there. And like I say, I will be coming back to it when Nigel comes on as my guest. Okay, enough. Good night. Sleep well.